Good brunch time, folks, and welcome to the electronics bench. Uh, for the love of... All right, meet back here in five to seven. Okay, good afternoon, and welcome back to the electronics bench, folks. Somebody in the community mentioned capacitive discharge spot welding today, and that reminded me, hey, I have one of those. And as I have just recently realized that I should have been YouTubing all along, it's time to go back over that. And so then I remembered that I need to replace a couple parts that I had stolen for the solar project, and that I could now upgrade a couple connections a bit. And so of course the first thing you need for capacitive discharge welding, capacitors. And as you may be able to tell by my connectors, they started out with some of those car audio ones, which were not so great. Nice connectors though, but they did do the job for a short while. It had your three capacitors arranged in a row, like these two bottom ones that were slightly smaller diameter, so they all fit there like that in a shiny aluminum case with fancy lights on it and a nice volt display which at least I was able to turn into a cool movie prop for an acquaintance of a friend There's the voltage display and the cool tube lights that were on the side of the case There's more of these LEDs used to flash. I think it was supposed to steal your brain or something. Oh, there goes some more of them. Guess they just had to warm up. So I started out with that mobile audio capacitor supplied by my battery charger with a start function so you could turn the voltage up a bit and I think get up around 18 volts which is about what I found ne to be necessary to make a decent weld on this tabbing material which is five thousandths and I believe some of the factory tabs on batteries like this were seven thousandths but I had some difficulty welding through that, and this did the job. But running around 18 volts for very long eventually blew the vents on the capacitors. And there's the origin of this water jug. Even after those vents were blown, I was able to get by for a while, filling this with water to keep the capacitors cool. And I built a few batteries that way, and they worked. But I knew that something would have to be done eventually, so I began looking around the bay. And eventually, did a great deal on these things that no one on the bay at the time realized the value of, apparently. And I got six of them, so I did this other bank in parallel. which probably would be more of an improvement if I used a shorter and larger gauge wire. And so with this new voltage rating available to me, while the battery charger was still doing the job, the lazy hunt was on for a higher voltage power supply. And notice the microfarad rating there, meaning all six of these come up to 0.87 of a farad. And I believe the little old mobile audio capacitor array was claiming to be 3 or 5 farad. So I believe that may be what they refer to in the marketing department as a lie. But of course, this is my favorite part of the label. But as I said, the lazy hunt was on and so eventually a repair project resulted in profit.
It's kind of a stupid charger that we found aboard a hydraulic lift and replaced with a modern smart golf cart charger. And to make that battery charger turn on without the presence of the battery when the capacitors are dead, I just wired this in parallel. So you got your source of power and then these nice heavy short 4 gauge welding leads. And then with these sort of connectors they are connected to just a piece of 6 gauge solid wire that can be ground to a point, not too pointy, to make the spot welds and a piece of fuel line on there for insulation. And then to quickly and efficiently discharge the capacitors into the areas to be welded, this SCR, silicon controlled rectifier, a type of thyristor that only flows in one direction, in line on the negative welding lead, and controlled, activated, by this single alkaline cell run through a foot switch. But that's getting a little ahead of myself. When I started this project, I didn't know what an SCR was. I was just trying to solve a problem. Uh, I'm a somewhat of a miscellaneous tradesperson and use a lot of the heavy-duty battery-powered power tools. And I was surrounded by others who did the same. And this was back in the NICAD days, when they only lasted a couple of years. And so it seemed awfully wasteful and expensive to be constantly tossing the whole case and buy a new. So I took a dead battery to a battery rebuilding company. Who did this? And when I got it back, it would work intermittently as I moved the tool around and did not have the same torque. And I was kind of shocked to discover what I did when I took it apart. When compared to an original, this brand happens to have these nice plastic holders for the cells. It makes assembly very easy. It makes a sturdy battery pack and allows all the cells to be unwrapped without touching each other and cool better because this is for a heavy duty tool that uses a half hour charger. And I couldn't believe that they tossed those plastic formers out and used the hot glue. And so the whole thing was loose in the shell because it didn't have these taking up that bit of space anymore. And as it turns out, these cells, while having a higher capacity, do not output the necessary amperage. So I said, I see, this is another thing I'm going to have to do myself. And started looking into how they assemble these things quickly. Found that they use capacitive discharge welding. And looked into this company that makes some great looking welders. But I would have to go into the business of spot welding. So I started searching the internets for the do-it-yourself plan and came up with this general setup. And then the other interesting thing, as I said, I didn't even know what an SCR was when I started this. And all of the plans you know, the plans I looked at, they talked about how you needed to get the biggest SCR you could find and that it was likely to burn out eventually anyway. And I couldn't believe that they didn't realize what was immediately apparent to me. You got this large metal shelled electronic component that comes with threads on it that gets hot it needs a heat sink. So when I saw that, I immediately remembered my AMD K62 overclocking project. I remembered that somewhere in the boxes 
which were in a different location at the time, was a perfect heat sink for this application with a broken fan that would have been in the way here anyway. And here it is. There used to be a fan in the middle of this blowing outward. So I drilled and tapped that for the SCR to screw into. And then using one of the fan mounting holes as a guide, drilled and tapped that to attach the welding lead. And so I arrived at this, which has been working well for some time. And if I'm welding heavily for an extended period of time, I'll put a little fan on it. But as I fiddle with this today, I realize this was done before hydraulic wire crimper. Get one. Really, if you're going to be doing any amount of cabling, six gauge and over, this thing's a bargain at the usual internet sources. So let's first see if I can get away with recrimping these or if I'll have to get out new ones. I love this simple design with the, the way the dies go in here too. It looks like it'd be pretty easy to make your own dies to crimp whatever you like. Looks like that worked pretty well. So I'll redo this other connection too. So let's weld something. You gotta hold these down firmly or there will be an arc and you'll burn a hole in it. And how lucky you are. I believe you just witnessed my SCR failing. After about eight years, and doing this in the process, but it's made lots of nice packs like this. If I have to get a new SCR now, I think I'm still way ahead of that commercial unit price. There is now continuity through it at all times. So how about that, a bonus failure after explaining all that success. Thanks for watching.